Hi, I'm Holly Hughes, and I have a lot of stories about hearts in my life. And one of them started by writing a book called, Do You Know Where Hearts Come From? And the way I write books is I have blank pages, and then just I turn the page, and then I see the words, and I draw them. And this is what happened when I wrote this book. At the beginning of time, all the people of the world were artists. They spent their days drawing, dancing, and singing. Everyone was very happy. One day, nature decided to make shapes for the world. The first shape was very practical. It could build lots of things. The second shape was quite useful. It made just getting around loads of fun. The third shape was most sturdy. It made a shape that reached all the way to heaven. The next shape was puzzling. It didn't appear to be useful. It didn't build things. It just didn't seem to fit anywhere. But there was still something very special about it. When you touched this shape, it made your insides tickle. Being artists, Earth man and woman decided to call their new shape a ha art because it made them laugh. Naturally, they wanted to know why. People all over the world worked hard to solve the mystery. As they toiled, people cried with the excitement of newfound possibilities. Yet, hard as they tried, they could not figure out what made the ha arts tickle. Finally, they cried with frustration and exhaustion. One day, a wise bird flying past discovered the secret of the ha art shape. The special shape was the tears of joy and laughter, of frustration and sorrow, of exhaustion, pain, and hope, of people connecting together. People recognized the ha art as a symbol of their most powerful feelings and saved it for special occasions. It became a tradition to give ha arts to friends to show them how special they were. Hundreds of years later, people called scientists who have a knack for spelling things funny, discovered a ha art inside our bodies. And this is why today ha arts are known as hearts. Here's one for you with tickles. So, after I wrote the heart story book, I had the wonderful experience of having hearts jump into my camera. At that time, I was living on a sailboat, and I was sailing from the Bahamas up north. One day on Rum Key, all of these hearts just jumped into my camera. And it's really fun that you can see some hearts are at low tide and some hearts are at high tide. And this one here sort of looks a little bit like a sideways heart, but it also kind of looks like a man just looking over the beach. And I like that feeling of a big face looking down over the beach. Um, this heart here looks like it fell off of the mountain, and there's a close-up right there. One of the things special about the Bahamian hearts are all of the muscles that make shell hearts like this. We ate mussels in the Bahamas and loved them. Later, we sailed up the, the coast of America all the way to Newfoundland and across to Iceland. When we got to Iceland, we went to this area where the sailboat is in the Hornstrander, which is the farthest, nor most northern, most western area of Iceland which is a natural reserve. So no one lives there at this time full time. 
Um, as we hiked in this area, I was amazed at the beauty of the glaciers and all of the natural formations, both the growth and the rocks. And I wrote a little journal, which I would send on the sailboats, um, radio waves through the ham waves to my friends. And on one day, I wrote a story about how beautiful the nature was and how if everyone could experience nature in the way that we were, maybe there would be less war, less hatred, and in the end, just much more love and peace in the world because we were so affected by this beauty. And as I turned on the radio to send my message, I heard the story of the bombing of the Twin Towers. This was September 11th. And that just gave us chills. You know, how could I have been writing this story, which would not normally be the thing I would write about, war and violence, and then turn on the radio and hear about this violent crime? Well, we were in an area that is days away from other people. So we spent our time just sort of in peaceful prayer and, and confusion, actually, and bewilderment about what was going on with our country. And in those sh few days, all of these hearts jumped into my camera. So this is a very special poster about the Hornstrander hearts. And if you look close, you will notice that one of these hearts is the same as is these Bahamian hearts. And that's because that we ate the same mussels in Iceland. They taste delicious, but it never occurred to me to take another picture of those mussels since I already had that picture. So this piece doesn't have a heart in this photograph. And part of the reason is that you have to have a hope in your dream. And a lot of people look at this picture and see a sailboat and see a rainbow and have that kind of a dream in their lives. The next poster that I have is actually from the area called the West Fjords. After living in the, being in the Hornstrander, we sailed to the West Fjords to a town of Isafjordr, where I ended up living for three years. This was my home and community, and I did community art. This piece right here, which is the same as this one here, is a very special heart which represents to me different kinds of boundaries. Um, I was teaching in the school with the English teachers and the history teachers and we were talking about war and what you, would you fight for and what would you die for. And on that day, this heart just jumped into my camera. So it's sort of special. Um, the rest of the hearts in this poster are about the community. This heart is walking to the swimming pool. This is the shape of a sheep's muzzle. And in Iceland, many, many, many people are fishermen. And if they aren't fishermen, they have their lambs in the countryside. Um, this right here is a mural that I painted on a container ship that's about 10, 12 foot big. And Icelanders will tell you that their country is shaped like a dragon. And the head of the dragon is the West Fjords. So that's what I did with this mural. When the tourist office asked me to paint a map for the tourists to see where the places the boats could go, I chose to make that map look like a dragon's head. And another special little picture is this one here with the eider ducks. There is one island called Eidi where the eider ducks live and the, eider, the ducks um, going like this on the water make hearts and they collect it down and that's another source of income. These are blueberries which are special to the area also. Finally I came back home to America and this is my poster of Missouri Hearts.